I think that it was Kent who talked about the evolution of sports since the 50s and how things have evolved and changed. And one of the areas that I find has changed significantly is the fact that athletes at Columbia High School tend to specialize in one particular sport. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I remember the old days when an all-around athlete uh, was, was considered uh, important at Columbia. And we on the committee like to honor those at Columbia who were not just specialized in one sport or excelled in one sport, but were all-around athletes and excelled in various sports. The next honoree is from the class of 1982, Vincent Bavacqua. He's our all-around athlete inductee this year. Now I'll first talk about his career in football before I get to lacrosse. But in football he was a linebacker, one of the unsung heroes of the team that don't get all the recognition. But in his senior year he was all county and played on one of the few winning teams that Columbia's had over the last 30 years. Moving on to lacrosse, listening to, to John Hooper, I realize that it's, when you're on a lacrosse team at Columbia, it's more than just being part of a team. It's essentially being part of a family. And I think that's been exhibited tonight by the wonderful turnout uh, that, that you've shown. In lacrosse, Vincent was a star defenseman on the state championship team that we are gonna honor later tonight. He was considered by many to be clearly the most valuable player in the championship game that year when he held the best player in the state to virtually zero points or zero, uh, no goals, maybe one assist. He was voted All-American his senior year. He went on to play four years at Colgate uh, and was starring at, in lacrosse. After graduation, he became a lawyer, but he never forgot his lacrosse and, and football roots, and he did a lot of coaching at that level of lacrosse and football. Our next honoree is Vincent Vavacqua, all-around athlete, class of 1982. They asked me what I was gonna do, how I was gonna follow John Hopper, uh, Hooper. <laughs> um, and I had a very quick response, it was no problem because I've been following John Hooper since 1976. He may not know it, and a lot of other people may not know it, but I was the manager of that football team. And it's telling, it's laden, that I get an opportunity to be inducted along with one of my heroes. Before I go into that, I have to take a moment, if you all would, with me, please, to think about my number one hero, my wife, Stacey Jones, who I met at Columbia High School on October 25th, 1979, and never left her side until she passed in 2008, and I'd like you all just to know, just silently for a minute, that I do not stand here alone, that I stand here with her by my side and on my shoulder. So I'm here to represent the all-around athlete my lacrosse team is here, but I want you all to understand that they're also my football team, that that same group was the core. Without, if we had Perna, Brunson, Kroll, Shipman, and Scotty McCluskey, that lacrosse team would basically be that football team. 
And we are family. We were family for two seasons, as well as for our entire lives. But if you bear with me, I'd like to start at the beginning in 1976, when I went up to the Underhill Field every single day to see John Hooper and Paul Hooper and that 76 team. I was a gym rat, I was an underhill rat. That was my place to be. I just wanted to be around the athletes. I sensed the greatness. I wanted to be somebody. And I knew that was the place. And there were some names that were not mentioned from that 76 team. Chris Klotz, Chris Heinke, the Vidiello brothers. These are my heroes. Curtis Moore. So I went up there every day because football was important to my father. And if I got an opportunity to shine on the football field, the work he did every single day, Saturday, Sunday, and into the evening for four, sometimes three, four different companies would not be in vain. I wanted him to see me play football. So that's why I went up there and I watched. And one of the things that's important to understand at this point in my story, because I'm going to try to tell it chronologically, is that they sucked. <laughs> there was a long history of awful football being played at Columbia. And I, I asked around, like, when was the last time you guys won more than two games? And they all told me, and I, I no, it's, it, it's, this is what we do. We win the first two, and then we lose the rest of the season. This is just what we've been doing for, since the 50s. But I loved it anyway. I'm not without notes. So in 1976, I went up there in order to impress my father and to show him that I was a tough guy, that I was a man, that I had grit, because that's what young boys did back then. But I also wanted to be somebody. I don't know if, 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 if you other athletes had that feeling, but, but I wanted to be special. I wanted this moment back then. And at the end of that year, 1976, I got my first moment, which has come all the way around. I got my first piece of hardware, which was handed to me by Coach Curcio. It says, Vin Bavacqua, 1976, manager. <laughs> they didn't call me water boy, I was the manager. Bucket says he didn't remember, but I remember that after every loss, they would put me and make me ride on the luggage rack in the bus on the way home. I loved every minute of it. And, and to me, they were tough guys. They were heroes, and I wanted that grit. I wanted to be like them. So I went up there every day, and I watched, and I learned, and I just hung out. And I handed some water bottles out as well. I did that because I got cut from the Packers. <laughs> that was the first major moment in my life that I knew that I had to do something to reverse my fortune, that they had tried to take something that I really wanted from me, and that's when I learned hard work. I would go up to the field and, 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 and push the big guys around until they knocked me down. I would do all kinds of things to get myself in shape, lift weights, drink shakes at night to get big.
My first football team was not much like, unlike the, the Cougars. I played for the Villagers. The Villagers, not only, did, not only were the Villagers O for everything, <laughs> but we struggled, we had, we struggled to get a, a, a touchdown. The last play of the last game of the season, we were determined that we were going to score one touchdown. The important thing, however, is that my father got to come to the games and see me play. And he was always there. The next part of my story is at that table right there where in an effort to show my father that I was a man, I met some of the greatest men who coached me how to be a man. Keith Manera, Charles Taylor, Bob Curcio, Coach, Coach Purcelli, and Dan Broadhead. Coach John Purcelli and Coach Dan Broadhead. I don't know if it was providential that we had this, this football team that graduated with me had been through three coaches by the time we were seniors. But we won games and it was very, very new to Maplewood South Orange. But that's not the point. The point I want to make and what I'm here to talk about is those men who molded me into a man. I guess the one story that I really need to tell that nobody has ever heard is when I first left Columbia and went to university and I was very prepared. Thank you, Columbia High School. We were prepared. So they had this little meeting and they had this little get to know everybody and let's get, get together, touchy-feely, nice, kumbaya, let's sit down and talk about things so we can find out who you are. Yeah, I've been there, done that. I was able to handle it. But they asked this question, who is the most impressive person or who, who is the the, the greatest person in the world to you, or who, you know, who's the greatest person you look up to, a role model, like, and people were, were firing off names, it, it, each person, it was Gandhi, we had, we had Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King, and, and, and Sister Teresa, Mother Teresa, they were, these kids were dropping names, um, all of whom I had heard, but when they came to me, I said it was Bob Curcio. <laughs> without hesitation. And if you ask me again, I'll say it again, without hesitation, same answer. The problem is, if somebody were to ask me why, <laughs> Hoops tried to compare him to Emmer, I don't, I, you know, I'm not that technical, um, and, 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 and I'm not that complicated, so I have an answer. <coughs> When I went to Coach Curcio, and, and most of you may not know this, but I didn't touch the field until my senior year. I stuck by that family, by my big brothers, and I rode the bench, all America potential, whatever. I, I, I played my position. So by the time I was a senior, it must have been my junior year, I went up to Curcio and I still didn't have the stick work because people like John Hooper had been playing since second grade, Steve Ramos had been playing since third grade. So I asked him, I said, Coach, you know, I, 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 was, I, I had the, the footwork, I could, I could position myself, I had natural defensive skills, but I could not catch and throw with the lacrosse stick. 
I spent hours and hours playing wall ball. And I hit the ball upside the wall thousands and hundreds of thousands of times. And, and, and as an aside, that's what makes lacrosse players great. Wall ball. Because that's something that you just do with discipline. It's just you. So I did it. But I didn't, I didn't make the, I didn't get on the field. I still was not on the level as these, of these other players. And finally, you know, I went to him. He's a very strangely approachable guy. You don't know what you're gonna get. It's a box of chocolates. He might make you laugh, he might make you cry. And, but I took my moment and I walked up to him and I said, Coach, I've tried everything. I'm doing everything. I, I've done it thousands of times. What's going on? You know, what, what, what can I do? And he gave me this advice that has made me the man I am today. Words of wisdom. Nike picked up on it a couple years later, but it, it wasn't a big deal. But you know what he said to me? Just do it. I'm not looking for applause. I'm just here to let you know that that's what it is to be a man. That's what it is to be an athlete. That's what it is to be a disciple of, of, of Columbia Lacrosse. Just do it. Don't overthink it. So the last thing I'd like to discuss is that I, I not only want to be recognized, and again, I don't want to be recognized. I want you to recognize that skinny little kid that was always up at Underhill. But I want you to recognize him for not only what he took from Columbia, but what he gave back. And I enjoy coaching. I love it. It was an opportunity to give back. And, and it was a natural thing. It was a natural progression, progression because I had been coached by the best. So I'd like to leave with a point that's been bothering me because I've been thinking about this moment and what I was going to say and I've been all geeked up on myself and my grit and, and my hard work that made me the man that I am and, 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 and I feel like I'm a bit of an anomaly. I feel like the world has gotten a little bit soft and that grit that I had is, is, is not there anymore. I feel like Columbia High School football and, the, and, the, and that tough, just do it attitude is is on the wane so i'd just like to take this moment to 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 say to you that take that moment to get that little skinny kid and coach him teach him love him because that love made me the man i am and i thank you for that there's one more thing that I would be remiss if I didn't speak about. Well, two. One is, it was Coach Keith Manera sitting right there who said to me, who coached me in football, who said to me, go play lacrosse. And I, I, would not, I could not leave this stage without giving that man the, the credit he deserves. But that's the past. And I would like to just say one last thing about the future. The future is my best friend, Steve Ramos, who taught me the game, who pulled me into the West Gym and said, this is how you do it. And I will always love him for what he did, but you all will love him for what he's doing and what he will do into the future because he loves the program and he still has the patience to give back and he still has the ability to take these snowflakes and turn them into some snowballs and we can be strong again. Thank you.